For this session, we will talk about your liabilities. First, we define liabilities. How do we recognize your liability? How do we present your liability? And later, we also try to talk about your accounts payable as one of your liabilities. So for this session, our main focus is only your liabilities and your accounting for accounts payable. Let's start first with your liabilities. So what is a liability? Liability is defined under your conceptual framework as a present obligation arising from past event, the settlement of which is expected to result in an outflow of economic benefits. Okay. So first, what we need to learn here is, is there is a present obligation. This present obligation may be based on a particular obligating event. So there must be an obligating event which creates your obligation. Take note, it must be present obligation based on a past event. It is not an obligation based on a future event. So the event must have been completed. The event must have been completed first before there is an obligation. Take note of this. The present obligation is based on an obligating event. That obligating event is based on a past event and not a future event. So the event which creates now the obligation must have been completed first before we can say we have a liability. Therefore, guys, if that is a future event, there is no obligation, there is no liability. So it is important for you to know if that obligation is already completed or that particular event is already completed or not so that we can properly classify it as a liability. Furthermore, what is the effect of a liability? The effect of a liability is that it will result into an outflow of economic benefits. So if you still remember, before, asset is defined as resulting into an inflow of economic benefits. A liability has the effect of outflow of economic benefits. Because generally, you need to settle settle the liability. Since there is a settlement, it means there is an outflow of economic benefits. So how do we actually settle your liability? We actually settle your liability first by paying off your liability through an asset or you try to pay off your liability by issuing equity. So in settling it, the economic benefit that will go out is, of course, the settlement through an asset or the settlement through a payment of your equity. If that is a settlement of an asset, what is your entry? You debit your liability, you credit the asset. If the settlement is equity, you debit your liability, you credit your shareholders' equity for the equity issued out of your liabilities. So having defined now your liabilities, we look into the essential characteristics. First, it is a present obligation. So when we say it is a present obligation, again, take note, there must be a past event which obligates you currently to settle a liability. Remember that. When we say present obligation, there must be a current obligation because once the obligation ceases, If the obligation ceases, it is now considered not a liability. So the obligation first must be present, meaning it is existing. Next, it is unavoidable. What do we mean by unavoidable obligation? In short, that obligation or liability should be settled. Why? Remember on the definition of a liability, what did we say? We say that for a liability to be considered as a liability, there must be a settlement which now results to an outflow of economic benefits. Therefore, when we say that a liability 
should be an unavoidable obligation, it means it must be ultimately settled. Because if that is an avoidable obligation, if that is an avoidable obligation, you don't have any obligation at all. Why? For example, you have e-liability and then it says, they, it says there that you may or may not settle it. In short, it can be avoided. So if you can avoid it, why would you include a liability if you can avoid it? Then it is proper to not include it as a liability, but rather remove it in your books because it is avoidable, right? So we can say a liability is considered as such only if it can be settled. Remember that there must always be a settlement of that liability, which results to an outflow of economic benefits. Because if that obligation or liability is avoidable, then there is no obligation at all. There should be no liability to be recognized. And finally, one of the exceptional characteristics, it must arise from past event. You already know this one. There must be an obligating event that creates the liability. And what is that obligating event? We call that your past event. Because if that is a future event, meaning it did not yet happen, it is not yet completed, as we said, it is not considered a liability. Clear? So take note of this following characteristics. It must be present obligation. It is existing. It must be unavoidable because once it becomes avoidable, it is not a liability. And lastly, it must be from a past event, meaning a completed event or obligating event, which now creates your liability. The obligating event precedes, precedes your liability. Okay? Obligating event precedes your liability. It is not liability first before obligating event. So there must be first a past event which creates your liability. We talk now about your past event. As we said, your past event is your obligating event. Your obligating event can either be a legal event or a constructive event. So if that is a legal event, it is created by virtue of law or by virtue of contract. So there is a law or a contract which creates now your obligation. So for example, you entered into a contract to sell or to deliver 50,000 of your products to a particular customer. And in return, the customer already paid you. What do we call that one? We call that as your deferred revenue. So what gave rise to that particular transaction or liability. So the past event which gave rise to that is a contract. So based on law. Furthermore, a past event can either be a constructive event. So we already know and it's basic to know that most of our obligations comes, comes from law, contracts, or the other sources of obligation as to illegal obligation. However, what is new in your accounting here as to a past event is a constructive past event. So you can have a constructive obligation out of a past event. So what is a constructive obligation? A constructive obligation is based on an expectation of continuing past behavior or of future behavior where an expectation of this has been created. Okay, so it's either past behavior and because of that past behavior, there can be an obligation or there is an expected future behavior because of a past behavior. Again, when can we say it is constructive? There is a past behavior because of this past behavior, it creates now a constructive obligation to the minds of users or because of the past event there is an expected future behavior which now creates your obligation or your liability okay 
So what is an example of your constructive obligation? One common example is a bonus. Bonus normally is not based on a law or contract. But for example, the company is giving bonus every December. They call it as 14th month. There is nothing in the contract or the law which gives the uh, employer the obligation to pay bonus. However, he always gives 14th month, 15th month during December. So, of course, because of that continuing past behavior of always giving a bonus, what is created? Of course, the employees will now expect that the employer will give again bonus. So there is now an obligation or an expected future behavior. What is that? Again, that the employer will give bonus on December. That is a constructive obligation. Okay? Normally, an example of your constructive obligations are warranties. So for example, uh, it is not normally provided under, but actually warranties are already provided in some contracts. But at some point, it is a continuing behavior that in case an item which is sold was not properly fit and not in its proper use, it should be covered by a warranty. That is a constructive obligation based on a past behavior. Okay, So again, your past event can be based on a legal event or a constructive event, which is a past behavior, which creates an expected future behavior or an obligation in the future. So what is the recognition criteria for a liability? So we're done with the definition of liability. We go now with your recognition criteria of a liability. So how do we recognize your liability? We recognize a liability if it's probable and measurable. When can we say that a liability is probable and when can we say it is measurable? Of course, a liability is considered probable if there is a probable uh, outflow of economic benefits. And when can we say that there is an outflow of economic benefits? If the liability should be settled, in short, it is unavoidable. Finally, it is measurable. It is capable of being measured by a peso amount. So we can recognize once it is probable that there is an outflow of economic benefits, that it is an unavoidable obligation, and we can measure it reliably. Next, our classification or presentation of a liability. So under pass one, it provides you for the classification or presentation of a liability. So normally, just like your assets, it can be classified as either current or non-current. Your liability can also be classified as either current or non-current. The question is, when can we classify a liability as current and when can we classify a liability as non-current? Okay, a liability is current if ever it is expected to be settled within 12 months after the reporting period. So what you need to look at in this particular item is the reporting period and from the date of reporting period this should be less than or equal to 12 months so for example our reporting period is december 31 2020 and the liability is due on may 1 2021 how many months you have four months so the question is is four months less than or equal to 12 months yes Therefore, we can consider that as current. Next, if it is expected to be settled within the normal operating cycle or uh, operating cycle as defined is the period between purchasing materials and converting them into cash or cash equivalent. Okay, so your normal operating cycle is uh, actually based on the concept on your financial management. That is from the purchase up to the conversion into cash. Now, uh, as to your current liability, when can we say that it is considered as current under your bullet number two? It is considered under bullet number two if it arises from your normal operating cycle or what we say as a trade liability. As long as that liability is considered trade, it is current, 
Okay? Three, because it is from normal operations. So normal operations is the normal operating cycle. Once you see a liability considered as trade, it is considered current. Sir, what happens if ever our trade is more than 12 months? Sir, what if our trade is more than 12 months? So for example, your business is construction. What if your business is construction? Will we consider that still as current? Since construction normally is more than 12 months, can we still consider it as current? Yes, we can still consider it as current. Why? Because it is within the normal operating cycle. Sir, how then can we uh, try to at least mix these two items, the first bullet and the second bullet. Okay, so in the second, on the first bullet, it must be less than or less than or equal to 12 months. On the second bullet, that can either be more than 12 months. So if we try to uh, harmonize the two items, how can we harmonize them? We can consider the liability as current if it's less than or equal to 12 months or within normal operating cycle, whichever is, longer okay so either of the two first it can either be less than or equal to 12 months or it is within the normal operating cycle whichever is longer we can classify it as current liability just remember it is always current liability once you see trade in it so trade payable trade notes payable trade loans payable so long as you can see trade in it it is within the normal operation of the business therefore current Third item, so that we can say it is current, if it is held mainly for trading purposes, meaning for buy and sell purposes. So if it's for buy and sell purposes, therefore, we can still classify it as current. So for example, you buy a liability and then you will sell it later on, or you create a liability and then dispose it, create and then settle, create and then settle, create and then settle. We call that trading of a liability. So if it is mainly for trading, it's still current. And then lastly, if the entity does not have an unconditional right to delay settlement beyond 12-month period after the reporting period, take note, does not have an unconditional right to delay settlement beyond the 12-month period. You should read this together with the first bullet. Okay, what is our general rule? If it's less than or equal to 12 months. And then under the fourth bullet, what does it say? You don't have unconditional rights. So no unconditional right. Okay. So what do we mean by no unconditional right to delay settlement? So here, we knew that it is May 1, 2021. That is the due date. When we say no unconditional right, you have no right to postpone due date. Right? You have no right to postpone due date. In short, it will be fixed on May 1, 2021, as we had on our example. It will be fixed on May 1, 2021, as we had on our example, if you have no unconditional right. But what if you have conditional right? What if you have a conditional right? That is considered as a refinancing. Later, we will discuss the rules in your refinancing that what if you have a conditional right? What happens to your liability? Will still it be current or will it be classified as non-current? Okay, take note of the four items on when can we classify a liability as current or non-current. Current, if expected to be settled within 12 months, if it's within the normal operating cycle, if it is for trading purposes, and lastly, you do not have an unconditional right to delay settlement. If if, if it's more than 12 months, not within normal operating cycle, it is not for trading, or you have conditional, unconditional right. Okay? So, binaliktad natin. So, we just got the reverse of the four items. So, if it's for 12 months, more than 12 months, if it's not within normal operating cycle, 
if it is not for trading, if you have unconditional right, how do we treat it? We treat it as non-current liability. Okay? We treat it as current if the four items are present. Any of the four items, we treat it as non-current if it is not considered a current liability. So if the four items, any of the four items is not present. So we're now in your currently maturing debt. So when we say currently maturing debt, it means that it is a long-term debt, long-term debt, my pencil is not working. Okay. So it is a long-term debt and then it is now maturing. So for example, it is a five-year liability. Five-year liability, so it must be uh, due after five years. However, it is now currently maturing, so it means it is now the fifth year. It is now the fifth year. So it is a long-term debt in which it is now it is now currently maturing. Okay. So uh, on your currently maturing debt, for example, on that five-year long-term debt, which is now due because it is the fifth year, then we should classify it as current. That's why the general rule on a currently maturing debt is that it should be current. Okay. Now, when can we classify a currently maturing debt as non-current. So for example, we have a five-year loan. My pencil's not working. Wait, I'll just need to fix my pencil. So it's a long-term debt, five-year loan. So let's say you got that loan on January 1, 2015. So when is the due date of that loan? When is the due date of that loan? That is, let's say, five years after January 1, 2020. That's the due date. And uh, let's say today is March 31, 2019. This is your balance sheet date. Okay? So we have a long-term date, uh, long-term debt, five-year loan. January 1, 2015 is the date of the issuance. Since it is a five-year loan, the due date, therefore, is January 1, 2020. And now it is March 31, 2019, the balance sheet date. So from March 31, 2019, the balance sheet date, up to your maturity date, how many months? That is less than or equal to 12 months. That is less than 12 months only. April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So nine months. Since it is nine months, we consider that as a currently maturing debt. So it is a previously long-term debt, but now it is currently maturing. What is the treatment? It should be presented as a current liability. It should be presented as a current liability. Remember that. So since it should be presented as a current liability, then should it be always a current liability? No. What are the exceptions to the rule? So we can say it can be considered as a non-current liability. We can consider it as a non-current liability if there is a valid refinancing or there is a discretion to roll over or refinance the long-term debt or currently maturing debt. Let's first discuss refinancing. So in refinancing, to be valid, it must be entered before balance sheet date. And then secondly, it must be refinanced for more than 12 months, okay? So it must be entered before balance sheet date and it must be refinanced for more than 12 months. So here, our balance sheet date is March 31, 2019. And as we can, as we can see on our example, 
it is to be due within nine months. Therefore, it is considered current. So entered before balance sheet date, and it must be refinanced for more than 12 months. So one example is that you entered into agreement which is completed on March 15, 2019 to refinance the debt to be due on January 1, 2022. Okay? So take note, when is there a valid refinancing? It must be entered before balance sheet date. When did we enter into the agreement? We enter into the agreement on March 15, 2019. Okay, remember, what's the date today? That is March 31, 2019. And then we entered March 15. Question, is March 15 before March 31? The answer is yes. Therefore, there is a valid refinancy. There is a valid refinancy. Next, it must be refinanced for more than 12 months. So look from the balance sheet date up to your refinancing date. The balance sheet date is March 31, 2019. The refinancing date is January 1, 2022. So from March 31, 2019 to January 1, 2022, we have 2020, we have 2021, and we have nine months. So this is two years and nine months in total. Is that more than 12 months? Again, yes. Therefore, since the two items are present, the two items are present, therefore, we have a valid refinancing. Okay. Again, what is this story here? It is considered current. It is a current liability. However, when can we consider that as a non-current liability if there is a valid refinancing? When is there a valid refinancing if the two items are present? Entered before balance sheet date. So in our example, it is entered before March 31, which is March 15. And it must be refinanced for more than 12 months. Here it is now due at January 1, 2022. So from March 31, 2019 to January 1, 2022, that is two years and nine months. So more than 12 months. It will now be considered as a valid refinancing. So if there is a valid refinancing, what is the treatment? Non-current liability. Okay? As a rule, currently maturing long-term debt is a current liability. But if there is a valid refinancing, non-current liability. How about the second one? Discretion to refinance or roll over. Do you still remember what we have said a while back? You have unconditional rights. So if no unconditional right, if no unconditional right, what is the treatment? It is considered current. What is this discretion to refinance? When we say discretion to refinance, it means you have unconditional right. It means you have unconditional right. Okay, so in short, you do not have any thing to do with the debtor uh, with the creditor already so when we say unconditional right it means that you do not need approval of the creditor because who are we here we are the debtor why are we the debtor because we have the liability since we have the liability it means we are liable to pay that obligation now when we say you have unconditional right it means, guys, that you do not need the permission of the creditor for you to refinance or roll over that particular liability because you have the discretion to refinance. Unlike in refinancing, you must enter into an agreement. Okay? Refinancing, you must enter into agreement. Here, it is considered a right. In short, anytime, you can just roll over the liability or refinance it. In short, you can just change the due date of the liability anytime or any any uh, thing you wish for to do as to the due date of your liability. Okay? Currently maturing debt, what is our treatment? As a rule, 
current exception to the rule, refinancing. When is your valid refinancing? It is entered before balance sheet date. And there is a discretion to refinance or roll over that liability. We go now with your covenants. What is a covenant? A covenant is considered as a uh, agreement into your liability. So these are considered as borrowing agreements. So for example, you have a loan and then under it, you have an agreement not to sell any asset during the term of the loan. Okay? So you have a loan. Let's say that is a five-year loan. And then under that loan, there is an agreement there not to sell any asset during the term of the loan. There is an agreement there not to sell any asset during the term of the loan. Okay, that is the covenant. It's considered as a borrowing agreement. Now, what if there is a breach of covenant? In short, breach of covenant, which means that there is uh, considered as there is a consideration that the loan or the agreement was not met. Okay, so there is an agreement not to sell any asset. When we say it is breached, in short, during the loan, you sell an asset. Okay, so let's say uh, under the agreement, you should not sell any long-term asset or a property, plant, and equipment. However, during the term of the loan, you sold a property, plant, and equipment. What happens to the loan? It is considered breach. Okay breach it means that the agreement was not met or it was not kept okay so what is the treatment if it is breach as a general rule once there is a breach of covenant take note as a general rule once there is a breach of covenant it is considered current as a general rule if there is a breach of covenant it is considered current as an exception to the rule we can place it as non-current if there is a valid refinancing. When is there a valid refinancing again? If ever it is completed on or before the balance sheet date and it is refinanced for more than 12 months. As we have discussed a while back in the previous slide. Okay, again, covenants are agreement that is placed under your loan. So if ever your liability has a covenant and you did not meet the conditions of the covenant, then it is considered a breach covenant. So if there is a breach of covenant, what is the treatment? General rule, it should be treated as a current liability. Exception to the rule, it can be considered as non-current if there is a valid refinancing, which is completed on or before the balance sheet date, and it is refinanced for more than 12 months. Okay? So that's it for our breach of covenants. And then lastly, we talk about your measurement of your liabilities. So how do we measure your liabilities? Your liabilities current are measured at face amount. So whatever is the amount of that liability, uh, let's say it is uh, 10,000, then the reliability should be measured at 10,000. But if it's non-current, if it is non-interest, if it is non-interest, you measure it at present value. If interest bearing, you measure it at face amount. This is just like your assets, if you still remember. If non-interest, present value interest, Face amount. Okay. So again, what did we learn here in your liabilities? For liabilities, we learn our recognition. So the following criteria are present. It must be present. It must be a present obligation. It must be an unavoidable obligation. 
and there must be a settlement of that particular obligation. Then it must be probable and measurable. Furthermore, what did we talk about reliability? We talk about your classification or your presentation that is either current or non-current. On this current and non-current, we talk about your refinancing and we talk about your breach of covenant. Lastly, we talk about your measurement of your liabilities that is either face amount or your present value. Okay, that's all for liabilities.